Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus Channel. When people think of the Air Force, they usually envision fast fighter planes packed with weapons of different calibers and power. However, with the development of other technologies in communication and electronics, the military force is also focused on another kind of battle, electronic attacks. These consist of disrupting, deceiving, or even neutralizing enemy electronic systems like their radar and communication networks. This type of technology started with the development of radar systems in World War II, expanding with the improvement of avionics and devices in the upcoming decades. It has encouraged the construction of various types of aircraft, especially designed for electronic attacks. From the first modified Avro Lancaster to aircraft such as the EA-18G Growler. Like most fighter aircraft, specialized electronic attack aircraft follow the same takeoff protocols. Before boarding the plane, pilots must attend the mission briefing, during which their superiors inform them about the details of the operation, even if it's just tests or training. Morning, sir. Hey, man. How are you? How are you? Good, sir. Hey, man. Good, gentlemen. I'm Airman Wallen. I'll be the PC. I have all tipped in. Once boarding the aircraft, pilots carry out checks to ensure that all aircraft systems, including avionics and control surfaces, are working. Certain aircraft, such as the EA-6B Prowler, use an explosive cartridge starter to start the engines. This system uses a cartridge filled with gunpowder, which generates hot gas that travels towards the turbine rotor when ignited. As the engines are powered on, ground control gives clearance to the aircraft for taxiing to the designated runway. When the plane is positioned on the runway, the pilot reviews takeoff procedures, including rotation and initial climb speed. Finally, the throttle is increased to take off power, allowing the aircraft to speed up through the runway and climb up to the skies. During operations carried out by fighter aircraft, pilots are exposed to many risks, which can result in accidents or conditions that force the pilot to separate from his aircraft. In these cases, pilots can end up in inhospitable places, without food or water, and exposed to the elements. This is why each pilot brings a survival kit, meticulously prepared and maintained by the aircrew survival shop, to ensure that pilots have essential equipment in the event of an ejection. Usually, this kit consists of a survival knife, used for various tasks like cutting wood or self-defense, a strobe light for locating the pilot during low visibility conditions, a water bottle, a Mark 80 kit flares to create a signal for rescue teams, and a mini mag light. Processes such as adding the emergency kit for pilots are part of the preparations for any type of combat aircraft. However, 
certain aircraft types have unique procedures, such as the EA-6B Prowler. Being an aircraft for electronic combat, an electronic warfare officer is responsible for the complex systems of the aircraft. Yet their responsibilities go beyond just operating the electronic warfare systems, as they can also focus on strategic planning, in-flight management, and post-mission analysis. Their expertise is also used for training programs and teaching new apprentices about utilizing electronic warfare devices. Normally, they prepare the trainees for pre-mission preparation, in-flight operations, and electronic countermeasures. The EA-6B Prowler has been one of the Air Force's great tools for electronic countermeasures. However, after more than 40 years, this iconic aircraft made its last flight, marking the end of an era for the U.S. Marine Corps and the broader electronic warfare community. Such flight was carried out by four members of Marine Tactical Electronic Warfare Squadron 2. Departing from Cherry Point, North Carolina. And made a commemorative detour over the Northrop Grumman factory. The Prowler's final destination the Smithsonian's National Air and Space Museum. Specifically, the Stephen F. Udvar Hazy Center near Dulles International Airport. Once the plane landed, it was taxied to the museum, where a gathering of active duty and retired Prowler aircrew members were present to witness the aircraft's last military flight. Developed in 1966 from the A-6 Intruder for use during the Vietnam War, the EA-6B Prowler carried out numerous missions, jamming enemy radar systems and gathering radio intelligence on those and other enemy air defense systems. It was a vital tool during conflicts like the Gulf War in the early 1990s, operations over Bosnia, and missions in Iraq, Afghanistan, and Syria against ISIS. From 1998 until the development of the EA-18G Growler in 2009, it was the only dedicated electronic warfare plane available for missions. Thanks to its AGM-88 Harm anti-radiation missiles, the aircraft became an essential tool for attacking enemy radar sites. It keeps the other aircraft alive and in the air. It also is able to provide air-to-ground suppression of uh, IEDs and uh, in, in defense of the ground troops. Uh, so again, it's the only, the only dedicated airframe that can do this, that the Marine Corps has in its inventory. During the Vietnam War, the A-6 Intruder served as one of the main attack aircraft for the U.S. military forces. However, the need to improve electronic attack capabilities drove the development of the EA-6B. So the A6 frame was used as the base design. And several modifications were implemented to install the necessary devices. The Prowler featured extensive modifications, including more powerful engines, 
sturdier landing gear, and a more rugged frame to handle the demands of electronic warfare missions. These enhancements allowed the Prowler to take off and land heavy, laden with sophisticated jamming equipment and other electronic warfare tools. After the success of the EA-6B Prowler, the end of the first decade of the 2000s brought with it the development of new aircraft that also focused on electronic warfare and communications disruption. This aircraft is the EA-18G, which was designed from the FA-18 Super Hornet, of which it shares almost 90% of its components, including airframe, Raytheon AN-APG-79 AESA radar, and weapon systems, such as the AN-AYK-22 stores management system. The improvements installed on the EA-18G for electronic defense includes fiber optic networks, data buses, and mission computers, giving greater speed and efficiency for electronic countermeasures. To accommodate this equipment, the aircraft underwent structural modifications, including additional cooling systems and power generation capacity. The airframe includes alterations to house electronic receivers and antennas and changes to improve electromagnetic shielding. Being an important aircraft during military operations that is in constant use, the EA-18G requires continuous maintenance processes. These are carried out based on daily aircraft inspections, implemented before and after a flight. With this, the ground team determines the systems that require repair or replacement during scheduled maintenance. During these sessions, both avionics and software updates are taken care of as well as engine and fuel system maintenance. With these checks and maintenance, the aircraft is ready to begin the operations assigned to it. This involves the preparation of the aircraft's weapons and unique systems, like the AN-ALQ-99 jamming pods. It's an electronic attack device used against radar and communications targets, suppressing enemy integrated air defenses. These pods are the primary electronic attack tools of the EA-18G and are loaded onto the aircraft's external pylons by the ground team. In the aircraft's wings hardpoints, the technicians can attach offensive weapons, like the Harm-88 anti-radiation missiles used to destroy enemy radar installations. During the loading process, the crew checks the operation of the countermeasure and navigation systems, ensuring the aircraft is completely ready to start its mission. Like many aircraft, the missions carried out by the EA-18G can span great distances. So maintaining optimal fuel levels can be a problem. This is why the aircraft has an aerial refueling system, which allows it to receive fuel from other aircraft, such as the KC-135. The Growler is equipped with a retractable refueling probe located on the right side of the forward fuselage, which extends to connect with the tanker's drogue. It extends outward to engage the hose and drogue system deployed by the refueling tanker, 
which starts pumping the fuel into the growler tanks. With the constant use of fuel by these aircraft and the need to achieve cleaner emissions, there is a new focus on developing alternative fuels that meet environmental objectives. This was the case with the EA-18G Growler using a 100% JP-5 biofuel, an equivalent of the standard petroleum-based JP-5 used by the Navy. This fuel test supports the energy goal of increasing the use of alternative fuels, enhancing energy efficiency, and reducing dependency on oil-based fuels. All these progresses have shown that technological advances like alternative fuels and integrated systems will shape the future of electronic attack warfare and aircraft development. Such growth will enhance the tactical advantage and operational efficiency of military forces worldwide. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.